Amerikaanse. Ver. Dat wordt niet hè? Ik had hem schoon achter laten klaar zijn, maar dat dus, uh... ja, maar, maar dat past net, hè? Waarom? Ja, oh, wat mooi hoor. Dan draaien we er ding. Ja, ja. Roepen maak je dat niet mee. Nee. Ja. Nieuwe equal. Nieuwe equal. Nee, nummer dat op ik. Uh... Ja. Hij zegt, ik heb wel een selfie gemaakt. Ja. Ik stuur een selfie. Ik stuur een selfie. Zeggen we dat we de foto van hem vandaag sturen. Ik ben daar gevallen. Wat? Zet nu ook de foto. En ik heb een nummer. Ja, je ziet er nooit weer. Ik leg hem hier oh, okay. even terug aan uh, Patrick. Ja, ja Roger. Kom goed, kom goed. Er. So recently what we did was we worked with the Dutch Royal Navy and the Dutch Royal Marines. What we were doing was loading the AAVs onto their landing craft utility vessel and crossing a fjord and just working with each, uh, working with both of them, both us and the Dutch and pretty much just seeing if we were able to even get AAVs loaded onto their platform and be able to cross utilizing their resources to cross the fjords. It's good because they're our NATO allies, so we want to start building that bond. So if we were to go up against a peer near peer, then we already have a basis established as far as working with one another and starting to build bonds and trust amongst each other. I learned the Dutch are uh, very nice people, right? They're excited to work with us as we are with them. They're very easy to work with as well, and it just made the training operation that much smoother because everyone was very much uh, excited to work with one another. It'd be useful because then if we did not have vessels of our own and we're going in as a coalition force, then we at least know we have a platform that can be utilized for us to be able to transport troops and vehicles. I think that uh, the challenge would really be just the language ability. Right, we use, they use the metric system and we use a different system as far as uh, weights and measurements. So that can create uncertainty to a degree just because if I tell them a certain weight or length, it's going to be 
we're gonna have to convert it to their size just to make sure we don't do anything that can like a sample load up AAVs and be overloaded onto an LCU causing it to capsize. Okay, so first we went up into their command element and talked with the major and we pretty much gave him the specifications of the vehicles. And with that, after we got the specifications, they picked out the two areas where we would load and then offload toward, uh, across the fjord. From there, what we did was we first made sure that they have their Goliath vehicle was able to even recover our AAVs. And once that was established that it could, we then utilized the Dutch ground guides in order to load the AAVs onto the LCU. Once they are loaded onto the LCU, then we went ahead and crossed the fjord, land it, and then offloaded the AAVs onto the roads. And then from there, it was just a round robin process, went right back on the LCU, utilizing the Dutch Marines, and then crossing back again. We did that several times. I'd say the biggest takeaway was just the interoperability amongst us and the Dutch. Right. Marines enjoyed that as well as the Dutch, so we just built some good ties with that, and I know some of the Marines have just made friends out of that. I enjoyed working in the command element with the Major and First Lieutenant. That was really an easy process. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be at first, especially with the language barrier. They were very receptive to everything that needed to get done, and it was just an easy going process for that.